Hi friends, MD Vegan. I make a new beet juice today with pears. That is my first pear uh, beet, uh, no, beet juice classic. That was with pear and a little bit of lemon. Here I have a beet, it's a large beet. I just, they are roots, yeah. I just wash them thoroughly and I brush them a little bit with the veg, veggie uh, br uh, brush. And then uh, you cut them into small pieces. Uh, for the blender, for the juicer, that it goes into the blue juicer mouth, the opening, and but this is a very powerful flavor. And if you drink beet juice, and you get it from the shop. I don't know what the fresh beet from the garden tastes like. Maybe they are different. But if you get juice this one from the shop, the health food shop, I got them from a big beet. You drink it; it scratches on the throat twenty minutes after you drink it, and that's because of the oxalates. That's a it's a heavy soluble salt that's in the beet and uh, it's not so good for the body. It, it um, can do, it cause kidney stones, for example, and other things. Um, but in a small amount, you can balance it and it doesn't really matter. If you are healthy, it doesn't really matter. So beet, don't get me wrong, is super healthy. Yeah? Beet is very, there are many, many benefits. The red color yeah, is good for the, for the blood and it gives you energy. It makes the blood carry oxygen e more easily. <clears throat> but the, as I said, there, is, there are always both sides in any, any plant and the beet has this oxalate. So that uh, is just a, an issue for the flavor. Yeah, you want to have it, I want to have taste my juice. Um, it, was, it has to taste delicious. Yeah? I have to have joy drinking it, otherwise I don't take it. It has to be delicious. So the first thing I found um, that makes beet taste delicious without the scratching is I just put a pear into the beet. Yeah, that was my first secret <laughs> I, I, I solved. Yeah, I found uh, this is a uh, two large pears here. Uh, also, I have to cut them into small pieces, wash a little bit so that the dirt gets off, and it has to be a little bit more pear than beet. Uh, beet is very strong and you need a lot of fruit to make it taste delicious. So that was the first juice and I added a little bit of lemon, not too much, just a little bit um, to make it perfect. Yeah? The pear is one lemon, one small lemon without the peel. So the pear has a very nice flavor, adds to the beet. But I don't want to put too much lemon to it because I want to maintain that wonderful pear flavor. To me it's a gentle flavor and you can override it the other ingredients and the lemon would do that. Yeah. A lemon is more like apple yeah. and it helps also, it also sour. The beet has not, uh, the, the pear has not many sour flavors. Yeah. But the lemon also helps to keep the color light. Yeah. But in this case there is no problem with the color because um, the red beet makes it red anyway. So, so the pear is a little bit balanced with this sour lemon, but not too much to keep the, the pear, the gentle pear flavor um, prominent. Yeah, that's important. But what I do today, I add celery stalks, just two celery stalks. This makes a very different tone to the whole flavor. I tried using celery or stalks, celery stalks, in other beet juices. I tried it with a carrot. I tried it together with um, kale, yeah. so it adds a certain smoky flavor. These smoky flavors are very interesting. They can be very unpleasant. For example, the same so if you drink just a kale juice, uh, just a celery juice, just only juicing celery stalks, to me it really tastes not very nice. I don't want to drink that. Many people enjoy that. They say, oh, it's super healthy. Well. I tried, I did not like, so up to you. I would, I would use celery in small, small amounts, it's super healthy, but in small amounts it has this little smoky flavor, it can be very exciting. Now the beet flavors, they are very complex. One of the most complex flavors I know is beet juices, because complex to me means um, they can unfold a whole array of other flavors that seem to be in the beet. Yeah. I, Personally, I think that might be because of there are earth flavors. Now, if you go to the ancient philosophy, you have the, uh, the, um, the they explain the world. Yeah? Philosophies try to explain the world. The ancient philosophies, the pre-scientific, uh, well, Western science begins in the maybe in the medieval times or so. Yeah, they begin to make Western science or I mean antique times. 
they begin to make experiments. They have abstract views. They take one type, one part of the reality out, take one part out, and make studies about that, and then they say something about it. Um, the ancient philosophies, they all have a holistic view. They could look at the whole and believe in the whole, that everything is connected, and then they say things about the whole. And it's the ancient world. The modern view is just abstract. You have an abstract view on a part of the whole, because they believe you cannot prove that everything is connected, so you only make, a, make an assumption about a single part of it, then you make no mistake. That was the idea of our ancient philosopher, the, as Aristotle. He said he was the founder of modern science by saying that abstract thing. You know? But the ancient uh, sciences, the ancient knowledges, wisdoms, they also have great benefits. Uh, we can, they help a lot. Uh, uh, for example, uh, our scientists begin to understand that now, uh, for some time already, because, for example, if you have chronic diseases like rheuma, rheuma or something like that, and then uh, diseases that are not uh, simple to heal with a cure, with a simple cure of the medication, uh, or with a surgery or so, then they go back to the ancient knowledge, to India, to China, to Asia, and they have these holistic views, um, and they can heal uh, these chronic diseases more easily than we can, the modern science, because of the holistic view. So, and when you go to the holistic views, you have the elements as the base of the world, how the world, is, the world is made up of elements, they say, earth, water, fire, these kind of things, air, you know, different kinds of elements they have in the different cultures, and the earth element is the one that comes last, that so contains all the other elements, is contained in the earth. Yeah. It's the last stone in the building, you say. Yeah. And so I think because of the earth egg flavors here, it contains all the other flavors, maybe, and that's why it is so complex. And that if you put something to the beat, yeah, another flavor, a sweet sour flavor, it seems to be, all the other flavors begin to come out. If you drink beet by itself, you taste uh, dirt. It's strange. You don't. I don't know. You don't like to have that. It scratches even. But put other things into beet, the whole array of fantastic flavors. Like you can't believe it. Try beet mango. You will be really surprised. Mango beet is. My absolutely, and that was the real breakthrough. But you know, pear beet makes it nice, and I want to try it with celery just to try. I don't know what it is like, maybe it is a failure, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but while you see that video, can you know already it was no failure because otherwise I wouldn't have published the video. But here now, right now, in the video here in my time, I don't know what comes out of it. I will try. The last element here, the last ingredient is a ginger that always helps with many, many recipes. Ginger and lemon, especially. Ginger and lemon is a nice combination. It adds fire and sour. That is a very strong addition and helps others flavor, other flavors to come out more. It doesn't so much add flavor on its own. Ginger is more to support other flavors. In this recipe, at least, it is too sharp. You can't eat it on its own. You can have a ginger shot that makes you the sun go up in your chest. <laughs> that is not a flavor, that's more a feeling. But for flavor-wise, it supports other flavors, brings heat to a recipe that can be very, very pleasant, can be very pleasant, and it's a very healthy ingredient. So, so uh, main ingredient definitely the beet, the pear, and the celery. And the addition, lemon and ginger. I'll try that, come back in a moment and tell you what it's like. Almost a liter of beet pear juice for the celery stalk. Let me try it now. Let's see. It looks amazing. The color is always really outstanding. I poured it into the in this uh, container, and it is really um, has a nice texture. It's a runny juice. It's pretty light from the uh, viscos viscosity. That means it's it's, it's uh, runny. It's liquid, not very thick. That's always something that is important in a juice. Is it thick or is it runny? The color, is it a wonderful, brilliant, dark red color here? Uh, and now, but the most important is the flavor. Let me see. That's more, what counts most. Mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 
That's a real beet flavor, but it's really close to beet. It's an earth flavor, but it is very sweet because of the pear. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of large amount of pears in there, and the celery gives it a light, a slight, this slight smoky touch, but very slight. You could maybe put even more into it. I don't want to do that now because I like this beet flavor so much. And the lemon is very decent in the, in the background. And the ginger fries up a little bit, just ever so slightly. You don't even really um, feel it. You feel the flavor of the lemon and the ginger. It is there, uh, but um, the main flavor is the beet, and that is fantastic. Really, usually if I make a beet taste more delicious, I add all the other flavors and change the flavor completely. But with this beet flavor, with a uh, with a pear here, uh, wow! Well, I have to say, I was surprised. This is one of my most favorite beet juices right now because you have this wonderful beet flavor so in the center, so dominating, and it's not unpleasant. It's wonderful. It's really nice. <clears throat> really, if you want to taste the beet as it should taste, you want to try this juice. Yeah. The celery makes it. Yeah, a little bit smoky, but very little bit. It's you can make it also without celery, maybe, but it's a very nice addition here. Really, I'm very happy to try it. I, I didn't had no idea I would it turn out like that. So I come back to my first beet recipe with a pear. It was years and years ago I made that, and um, I use it in other recipes: pear, beet, with others, yeah, with carrot and apple, or with an orange. And, uh, and a carrot and with the parsley and kale all these things I tried now I come back to the pear just pear it's amazing then uh, I forgot already how, my, how wonderful the beet pear juice is <laughs> yeah so please try and tell me how you like it and this is by the way I didn't even mention my fasting day uh, once a week I drink only juices or water or coffee, tea, plant milks. It has to be liquid, without fiber. So digestion, digestion rests. So digestion, nothing to do today. My digestion is off, has a pause, vacation. Yeah, Because usually if you have food on a regular day, healthy food, that takes 60% of the energy in this food goes into digestion. Just to digest it, to process it. 60% of the energy of the food. And on a fasting day, all this energy goes directly into the system. Yeah? It's mostly sugar, vitamins, minerals, and so on, these kind of things. Phytonutrients, you know, the colors, the flavors, all this also is nutrient. That goes directly to the bloodstream and uh, takes, shifts the focus from, from the person who does it away from the physical, away from the earth, more up to the air. You know? So it's a very light state of being. Uh, once the cleansing is done, after it can take some time to get the most of the cleansing. Fasting is a cleansing. I do it once a week. So cleanse my body and also cleanse my mind because uh, things, thoughts come up I have long forgotten. They're still lingering or lingering around there and not really aware of it. They come up to the surface and I can I can watch them, I can let them go, so go. Something I don't need anymore, I forgot already, but I let it go now. I'm still attached to that, now I let it go, no more attachment. So this is this is very nice, a cleansing of the body and mind, the fasting that is, and it's most effective if you do it really regularly, not just once, uh, maybe a huge amount of fasting once, and then you go back to a normal life. That doesn't really work. You go, most people go back. Yeah? It can work, but most people would go back, back to their normal lives and forget about um, that. I do it every week, once a week, once a, once a week, one day, one full day with night before and after. I don't eat, and then I have the most um, successful way. I, I try it now for decades, different kinds of fasting, and finally I got there the Triyoga Moon fasting, gentle moon fasting. Gentle, gentle juice fasting. This is something that is based on the science and the art of the flow, the yoga flow. Basically that means you feel the energy flow inside and that makes you happy. Yeah, that makes you heal from inside. The energy flow is free, also ancient science, ancient knowledge from Asia, they all knew that. 
the energy flows, yeah. you heal yourself. If the energy is blocked by fear, disease, accidents, whatever, then the healing is stopped. You want the energy flow, the flow. And that is this, this called the Triyoga flow. It's the art and science of the flow. And if you want to be in the flow all the time, so to be the best, do the best performance you can all the time, every moment, um, uh, then um, you, you practice this um, every day. Uh, I do that. And once a week, it is flow time for juices and um, cleansing. It's very effective, very easy. Um, once the, the heavy cleansing is over, you know, after some time, you get to the more subtle states of cleansing, the more smaller things that have to be cleansed and refined. Yeah? Then it gets easy, very easy. I, my, now I'm enjoying my fasting days. I'm looking forward. I have no problem. I'm not hungry at that. I don't want to eat even the day before. I am not hungry anymore. And so these things, they get normal. Yeah? But we have this wonderful juice. We have no energy. Yeah? It's kind of eating too. I will eat this, drink this juice in sips like a meal. A whole meal takes some time. I do it slowly because otherwise the blood goes into the... In, uh, the sugar goes into the bloodstream very fast, can get sugar spikes, and that can make me nauseous or dizzy or whatever. So if you keep it slow, drink it slow, then and there's no problem. Everybody can, everybody can do it. And if you feel it's a little bit too much, this cleansing is too strong, I would just have an apple or maybe a smoothie or a, a soup, yeah, a light soup, a light salad, to slow the fasting down. Because as I said, if you feel bad, the, if there's a sign of the energy blocked, and you shouldn't feel bad at any time. Uh, to me, that is a nonsense idea that you should feel bad for healing. No, if you feel bad, you couldn't help it. Yeah? Sometimes that happens, but you don't do it by yourself. I would never do that. I would always try to feel great, to keep the energy flowing every time, and then it's the best performance I can have. So, in order to avoid bad feelings, I slow down the fasting. Uh, I eat something. There's no, no problem with it. You just keep it up every week. You have a new try, a new chance to do it every week. I do that and it's the best way I ever found. It's so easy. <laughs> it's the easiest way. That's why I think it's for all. Because it's so easy. Because for all means everybody can do it all the time. Not just once. Yeah, to be a hero, do it once. No, do it every time. Make it easy. That's the way to live. <laughs> That's the right way to live for me, and I think it's way for it's it's yeah. I think it's most economic. It's most it's best. But when you have different ideas, let me know. We can talk about this. This is maybe a little bit provocative because I say this is best or so. But yeah, you, we can talk about that, and you have your own experiences. Let me know. We can always share. It is so much fun to share. It's more important to feel great than to have always the best answers, right? <laughs> yeah, we can all bring it together. We can share our knowledge. That's why I'm doing videos on YouTube and Facebook and so. You can subscribe, MDV on YouTube, have another recipe every single day. You can also go to Facebook, there is Tree Yoga Moon Fasting, there is a Facebook page, extra for Tree Yoga Moon Fasting. And I will post this recipe that is already posted there when you see that video. And you can also find me on MDV on Facebook and on um, Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter. Uh, MDV I have little uh, pages everywhere so just just to be a little bit present and uh, so you can you can uh, easily connect so thanks for watching I hope you enjoy and yeah keep it up let it flow be vegan <laughs>